Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> Think unexpected in the shadows. I like to put, actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know, you ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shanna Grissom. Well, I'm really excited because, you know, I've been getting a ton of emails and phone calls, and now we have just launched GiveYourWallSomeSoul.com. And so now the show is interactive. You can post pictures and ask for critiques, um, interact with other people on the site. It's, it's really exciting. So. When you get a chance, go to GiveYourWallSomeSoul.com and you'll really be able to tune into what we're doing here. Today, we're going to paint a sock monkey. You know, it's just been too long since, <laughs> since I've uh, painted a sock monkey and I thought, you know what, let's do my head cover. I just think that would be a lot of fun and um, it, it's a combination of a still life and an outdoor setting. So we are just going for it. All right. What am I going to start with? Well, you know what? I, I'm going for the red here, just because it's fun. So first what I'm going to do is grab my knife and mix some uh, shades for this Sock Monkey Lips. Okay. And you know, I'm going to have a lipstick called Sock Monkey Red one of these days. I'm working on it. Okay, that's a nice dark with, well, maybe just a little bit of violet in there. Carbazole violet. Oh, that's a wonderful dark. I don't think it's enough, though. We're going to have to make a lot. There's a lot of red on this painting. That's pretty. There we go. My agent said, God, you're, you're painting another, <laughs> another sock monkey a day. You really need to do another sock monkey? I think this makes 35. Yeah, you know, I really do. Um, when I first started painting, I thought I had to do serious subjects. And, uh, well, I did. I mean, I, I painted a lot of serious things. And I, and I wanted to be, <laughs> imagine this, I wanted to be taken seriously as a painting, painter. But you know what, I am so over that. Uh, my, my friend Sandy, she's got this little saying at the end of her email that says, uh, be yourself, everybody else is taken. And so, um, you know what, sock monkeys crack me up. So I'm just going to paint them. They make me smile. And this one in particular, I mean, this has really come full circle because, you know, I, I made a painting and the sock monkey was, the head cover was made as a result of the painting, and now I'm painting the head cover. So we're totally, totally have come full circle with the sock monkey. All right, so we've got two dark reds there. Now we need to lighten it up a little. One is warm, one is cool. Now I'm going to take some cad red light and some perylene scarlet. Oh, that's nice. And I'm going to warm this up a little too, because you know what? That's just a little too dark. And I already think I, I need some more red, so I'm going to grab some more of that. Imagine that. There we go. Can't have too much of that out today. 
It's going to be a red day. Okay. That's happy. That's, that's enough because we have a dark, medium, and light shade to start getting some form on all these tassels, on the lips. People have been asking me, okay, is the sock monkey a boy or a girl? <laughs> How can you tell? <laughs> well, you, you just don't ask things like that. <laughs> but his name is Clyde, okay? So that's how you can tell. His name is Clyde. All right. So I'm going to start. This was a kind of a gray day when I took this um, photograph. Had him posed in my backyard. So the light source is coming from the right. It's going this way. But there weren't, a, there was not a lot of contrast. So in my painting, I'm going to pretend like that's not happening. <laughs> that's why you paint. You do things the way you, you'd like to see them. So I'm going to still keep the light source going in the same direction. Oh, what a wonderful violet. And yet, um, I'm going to turn it up a notch or two or three or four. All right, so that's good. So there's some dark there. Where else do I see some red? Um, it's got some pom-poms right over here. A little bit of dark right there. What a beautiful violet that is. Okay, and some right under his little chin. We are all over this painting already. So it looks like it's disorganized. What are we doing? We're painting all over. No, we're just finding all the reds first. All right, so let's see. How about the little pom-pom that's down here? So I'm just scribbling. Remember we talked about this before? If you can scribble, you can paint. All right, so I think I'll leave this brush dirty and get a new one. And go into this brighter red. So this is the mid-tone. I'll throw some of that right here. Doesn't look like it's making a big difference yet, but it will. And I'm going to throw in some wherever I see the mid-tones. We're going to save the lips for later because it's just a little bit different. There, that's good. Turning my reference over. Okay. Now I need some cad red light. Let's see, and a new brush. I want to keep these clean. There we go. So it's going to be light right here. I'm going to just put it on the edges. And I'm going to wait till I get all three of the, or all four of these areas done, the edges first. Then I'll put it in the center. So I'm still trying to keep my brush fairly, fairly clean. A little bit of red there on the edge here. And this side, this side of the pom-pom. I love having this guy around while I'm playing golf. He cracks me up because no matter what shot, he's just silly. Sometimes he falls out of the cart. <laughs> that cracks me up too. And people were laughing about my balls. I got to, <laughs> I got to tell you what I do about my balls. You know, you got to mark your balls in golf. And um, some people put little serious marks on their balls. But you know what? I get my red Sharpie, because it's got to be red, you know. And I, and I make little happy faces on the balls. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it just cracks me up. And you know what? Having the monkey around makes me laugh, too. So that uh, if I woof it or it just really is not a great shot, I, I feel a little bit better. All right, so now we're going to blend. And um, I'm going to move this down into the darker area, down into the dark side of the pom-pom, and just blend it out. There you go. All right, let's see, do the same thing with this side. It's 
That's a good start. Let's see. I'm actually changing direction from the reference photo. So I'm changing the structure of the pom-pom there because I like it better. A little bit of form there. So we have these red blobs. That's all right. It'll work later. You know, if you check my blog today, there, there are a lot of stages that a painting goes through. There's the first stage where you're really excited about painting it, and it's like the woohoo, you fall in love, you just really want to do it. And um, then there's a, a stage where you start to realize the, the reality of the piece and, and what you need to work with. And you're still hooked, but it's going to take a little bit of work. And then there's this awkward, adolescent, really muddy stage where, God, sometimes you don't know if you're ever going to pull it out. Then after that, there's a transition where, where you, you start to see some progress, and then finally you resolve it, and, and, the, and the painting is done. Or if it doesn't work out, you throw it out. <laughs> but for the most part, you, you know, it goes through a whole process before you get it done. What you usually see here is the falling in love stage, because you know what? That is just more fun for me to show you and for me to paint. Okay. All right, I'll quit <laughs> playing with this pom-pom. We will move on to a little smile. Let's see. I'm going to get a smaller brush. And first I'm going to go ahead and, and draw his, his little smile so I don't forget where it is. He's just a happy little guy. Clyde, Clyde is the name of a... Uh, Clyde was named after our first dog. He was a happy dog. Okay, and while I've got this beautiful color out, I might as well start use his, you know, go ahead and put his little eyes in. I'm cov covering that whole area that would be red. And I'm just going to put that over the top. It's easier to just do this and put the red over the top than it is to try and paint around it. I don't like to have to be that careful. It's not fun. Okay, that's pretty good. So now I can just put some red over the top of that. Wire is red, eyes red. Now, be nice. You know, he, he, he just had red buttons for eyes, and that's, that's how it happened. I thought about changing him to another color, but you know what? That's just how he is. Well, that's happy. <laughs> okay, let's work on the lips here. Now you got to get smaller brushes. Need a little more control in this area. What am I looking for? That's not stiff enough. Okay, so I was looking for a brush that would have um, that was small enough so that I would have control. And stiff enough, if they're, if they're too wimpy, then um, they're great for little highlights and stuff, but they're not so good for, you know, drawing this form. So th this way I needed something that was really going to hold up. And also, it's probably going to get a lot of abuse, so there you go. All right, so where's the light? The light's mostly on this side, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm playing with that as well. I'm going to have the light be at the very top center, have the darks be edge, the, the, the darkest be edge, Ooh, let's start all over, have the <laughs> edges be dark, and that will really create some form on this smile. Okay, and how far? Okay, that's good. So now I'll just throw in some dark. Now that we've got a basic shape going. And I'm still going to go with a little smaller brush. Can't be that dark. It'll look just the same. Okay. And 
and you know, a lot of times when I put in a light color, you'll see me painting white or something light, and you'll, I'll overstate that, because if I don't, I'll overblend it. And that's the case that I need to do with this red. So I'm going to actually switch over to just straight red right out of the tube and put that down, because if I don't, I know that I have a tendency to overblend, and I'll lose that form, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to uh, find my clean brush here, clean red brush anyway. There we go. The people that make these head covers, they are amazing. Um, they really stayed true to my artwork. Um, and um, so I, I'm really lucky to have worked with a company as good as Daphne's. Okay. All right, so that looks pretty bizarre, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it really does, but it's going to start to take some form really quick. Let's add some red over to the side. And red on this side too, not as, <clears throat> not as much. And I'm scrubbing that right in. I may have to reinstate that smile. And I'm going to add a little more red over on this side. This is like a Cheshire cat where <laughs> you just see this, the smile. Oops, need to wipe my brush. Wasn't doing that. Now I can blend. Need a little more paint. There we go. That's a good start. I love form so much that I could play with this all day long and really bring this up, but I want to get the whole thing covered before I do that. So. You know, what I could do is switch gears and get, get his little body. That's the next biggest area together. So I think I'll go ahead and, and make that nice taupe color. Now, sock monkeys in the wild are made of socks. And uh, they came from the Rockford uh, Red, Heel, Red Heel Company in Rockford, Illinois made these work socks, and so people in the Depression started making these sock monkeys. That's how it got started. And uh, so my, all my paintings came from the sock, me that, sock monkey that was my mother's. And so they were all modeled after Clyde. And this one is not made of socks because uh, Daphne's has a lifetime guarantee, and he wouldn't hold up on the golf course if he was, I don't think. So, so we had to change that. So how am I making this taupe color? Well, I took opposite on the color wheel. I took a nice green and red and put it together. And so that made a, oh, kind of a seafoam green color. Still not brown enough, so I will add a little bit of red, a little bit of cad yellow deep. And we're getting there, but I'm going to need to cool it down a little bit with some violet. So I'm going to take some of this Sock Monkey Dark Red. Ooh, that's really pretty. It's not what I was going for at all, <laughs> but it's very pretty. <clears throat> Ooh, hey, you know what? That's like, okay, so I was about to give up, going to add some more color to it, and I kept mixing, and it was magic. It ended up being the right color after all. Sometimes I give up a little too early. Okay, that's cool. Now, typically, again, I would mix a dark, a medium, and a light together before, before I hit the canvas. 
And I, I think I'll do that because otherwise uh, <laughs> I'm going to be all over the place. So this will help me keep the structure. So I'm, I'm going to add a little white and a little bit of cad yellow deep. That was way too much cad yellow deep. So I'm going to add some red. That'll fix that. There we go. And I'm going to pull some of this pile over, add a little bit of violet, tone it down. And I'm still mixing to see if this can be saved, but it might not be. Some days are better for mixing than others. Now, I'm just going to pull it over. I might use it later, but I'm not going to use it now. Okay, so I'll add a bunch of white. There we go. And a little bit of that mix. There we go. That's a good light. So now we have light. We just need a medium. That's pretty. All right. We'll take some of this, tone it down with a little bit of blue, and see if that works. Ooh. <laughs> Some days it, they just don't mix quite as easily. I'm going where I was again. Maybe we have the medium and we'll just go for the dark. See, sometimes you got to go to plan B because I could stay there all day trying to get the perfect, and, you know, and, and it seems like today, no matter what I'm mixing, I'm coming up with the same color. So um, in the olden days, I would, I would continue to do that for a long time and be really frustrated. And um, sometimes it helps to just take some action and then you kind of move yourself out of whatever the little block is. So I think instead, I'll just make the dark, the dark, you know, make that be the medium, create the darker value with a little bit of blue, a little bit of red. There. So try going for something else if what you're, what you're reaching for is not available. All right, that's good. That'll give us a good start. We can get some form on this monkey. He does not like to be flat. Okay, so where do I see some dark? I use a little bit of medium. His arm. Actually, I used a little too much medium, but that's all right. His ear. I'm just going to look for all the dark areas. That's not quite that dark. That's more of a medium. So I'm looking at each shape. I'm saying, what's, I'm looking at values. What's dark, what's medium, what's light? What's behind him there? And I'm adjusting some of the drawing as I go. And if I don't like the way some of the drawing is, then I'm just changing it. Let's see what's down here. Darker on this side. Yeah, that's better. And you know what? Right under his little head needs to be dark. His little face. Okay. And I think I'll just sketch the rest in so I have a, an idea of where I'm going. Otherwise, I get lost. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but I definitely get lost. That's got to be light. All right, so we've got the mid-tones in, or the dark, and then we can start to... Really bulk him out a little bit. All right, so where's the medium tone? 
That's nice right there. I tested it. You know, they, they tell you to test in areas that you're not, <laughs> you're, you're not worried about hurting. That's what I was just doing there. I thought, okay, under his little arm, <laughs> it was safe. Okay, so where do I see medium tones? They're all over here. That's light over there. This is more of a mid-tone. This has got a combination, so right under here. That's medium. Medium right on his arm. Again, I'm looking for values. And then I'm going to stop and again go to the lighter area. Uh, and we talked about this before. If I don't do that, I'll overblend and I'll lose that, that uh, nice form. So I'm going to find a yet another, there we go, mid sized brush and put in all the light. And this is a pretty big brush for this area. You want to use the biggest brush you're comfortable with. I'm going to put it down first and blend later. So it's, this is like a hit and run here. Don't overanalyze it, which is easy to do. OK, so there's light here. I'm not going to quite touch these little dark areas and that way I'll keep the, the paint pure for now they're not going to contaminate and end up in areas I don't want them to be yet now there's different ways of creating texture you can create tactile texture that you can actually feel by taking the knife and just really putting thick blobs of paint down or you can create the illusion of texture by your brush strokes and that's typically how I paint and I, uh, when I do landscapes I'll do some tactile texture but for the most part I create the illusion of texture It's just funny. I had somebody ask me recently if I was self-taught. And I, um, I've had some lessons, and I've, also, and I've also done a lot of studying on my own. And I really, and, and then it came out later that the reason she asked is because I use such bright colors. And uh, it cracked me up because she, um, she laughed and she said she assumed that I didn't know any better. <laughs> and uh, that, that really cracks me up because when you're studying, and it doesn't matter if you're self-taught or if you're, you're studying with masters, you want to learn the right way to do everything. So you want to learn how to blend. You want to learn how to make these great neutrals. You want to learn all the rules and everything that you're supposed to do. So that when you want to break them later, you'll know how to do it and do it right. And um, that's what I like to do with the bright colors. OK. And I'm looking at him, and he's, he's pretty neutral compared to what I normally do. Did I ever tell you the story about Clyde Beers, how he got his name? Okay, my dad tells this story. He worked at, at uh, I don't know if I could say the company. Okay, so he worked at this large corporation, and... Uh, 
they, this guy would, they would always page this man named Clyde Beers. And everybody thought he was important. And, and so people would talk about Clyde Beers and Clyde Beers come to this and Clyde Beers would do this. And oh yeah, I know Clyde. And so somebody asked my dad, you know, do you know Clyde? You know, we, we hung out. And my dad's saying, no, I, I don't know Clyde. I've never met Clyde. And um, so the guy looked at him and he laughed. He says, you're the first person that I know that's been honest about this. There is no Clyde Beers. The, the guy just invented him as a joke and, and created all this stir. And, and uh, so here was this guy that, that everybody thought was so important that really didn't even exist. And uh, so th that's how our, our dog got named. <laughs> <laughs> and then it came along to the sock monkey. So Clyde exists now, but, but he's not at that corporation. Okay, so we're blending that. That's good. Now I can, uh, ooh, need a little dark on that side here. A little more light here. Just a little stroke here and there it makes all the difference in the world. All right, now I'm going to blend these little areas and keep moving. What is that? That's his little golf club. All right. So I'm going to blend this, take a clean brush, and wipe it, blend and wipe. You've got to keep that rhythm going. I'm scribbling. Remember, if you can scribble, you can paint, and that's how I'm blending. Oh, he's just a happy little guy. Okay, so I'm blending the light and the dark first. So as, as random as it seems, it really is systematic. I'm hitting all the light medium places first, and then we'll go to the light, the medium to the dark. And that keeps the brush cleaner longer. OK, right before I go to the dark, to the dark side, <laughs> I'm actually going to go right up against this um, little pom-pom. And we'll reinstate it in a second. And I'll go right up into it here, too. This is going to give that little pom pom y texture. Now, why am I doing this now before I'm through blending? Because that'll add a little bit of red when I blend this other side. This needs a little darker here, but I, I got to move on. I don't want to play with that right now. Well, I do, but I want to keep, I want to show you more of, of how to get the painting to a first statement. Okay, that's good. That's enough for now. He's starting to take a little shape. Let's get the rest of his little face done. That's mostly, boy, we need some more weight. Go through a lot of this stuff. I'm going to take the lightest light here, mix it with some white and some cad yellow deep. So that that's harmonious. A little bit, of, and then some of that with just the white. And I'll again, I'll start in the center again. That way I don't lose that area. Oops, I picked up a little too much cat yellow deep. That's all right.
I'm painting right over his little eyelashes because, again, it's easier to put this down first and paint over that later than it is to paint around them. And if you do, otherwise, if you leave them there, it looks like you painted around them. And if you pick up a little purple like I just did, that's all right. Okay, and there's actually light here in the center here. So I'm putting all this light down at once. What about his little hands? Oh, yeah, definitely. Hey, I just realized I, I missed a pom-pom. Well, we'll take care of that. Now, it's interesting. I'm putting light down in this whole area of, the, of each hand. You know what, I think this needs to go off the page. That doesn't look right. I, maybe with the foreshortening, but um, I'm just going to pretend like that goes off the page there. Right over what I did. Okay. Now, what was I saying about this? Okay, so I put just light in one area. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab some little bit of blue and actually just shadow over the light that I did on this side, on this left side here. Uh, oops, a little bit, a little bit more violet there. On the left side of his face. A little bit here. A little bit over on this side. And where else? Maybe just right under here. Okay, and the way to finish off this little, uh, this hand on this side, I'm going to take some blue. I'm going to draw the little ridges for his socks. Uh, let's see, that's red, so I'll leave that alone. That's good. And then we need a little red for his pom-pom. And let's see, I just need to throw in some paint here because I totally missed that. That will happen. If you're into sock monkeys, there is a sock monkey festival in Rockford, Illinois, in uh, usually February or March every year. And it's amazing. There are sock monkeys. They have a sock monkey museum. They have sock monkey everything. You got to go. We will finish that pom-pom, add a little bit of red to the edge. And move on, go back to the face. We are all over the place today. We. Okay, so I'm all over the place today. <clears throat> all right, so let's go back to the face and finish that off. The lighter color. Do you need to... Wet my brush here a little bit with that lighter color that we mixed. That's no different. <laughs> I'm going straight into the white here. There we go. I am picking up some of this purple, but that's okay. I'm just going to blend it in. Some on this side as well. Yeah, that's better. He's starting to take shape. I gotta step back and look at him. Oh yeah, he's happy.
You have to check. Well, you know what? I ought to just pull it out and show you. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I got to take him off the golf club because the happiest thing about this guy is that he is smiling whether he's coming or going. You got to check this out. Let me let me go get him. Okay. I mean, this this is what I love about him. Okay, so you see the front, he's happy. You turn around, he's smiling over here too. Is that just cool or what? Love it, love it. Just had to show you. Put him back on the driver. There we go. Okay, we're not painting that side today though. That's for another show. Okay, so I'm blending this. It's got a little bit of red on there, but that's okay. That's totally adding to it. And what's what's going on over on that side? And the light's way over here. I lost my contrast over here. So I'm going to fake it and uh, just add a little bit of dark in there and that will bring that back. Okay, I'll leave this alone for now. Oh, I got to put his eyelashes back. Make him happy here. Let's see, and one, two. There, that's good. All right, let's rough in a background. Uh, I think I will use green because green's complimentary and you know, there's a lot of green on the golf course. Unless it's the middle of winter. I'm taking some permanent green and oh, I didn't really want that white in there. Okay, put some permanent green and some sap green. And what I'm going to do is rather than you know, rather than you know, keeping all these brushes clean at this point, I'm taking my brush with red on it. That's really dirty. This is really dirty. I'm going to stick that puppy right in this green and that will that will make a nice neutral. So this is going to be a good background. I'm not painting every leaf. I'm not Ooh. How wonderful that is with that red in there. You get some nice surprises. All right. So let's just throw in here. And in Sock Monkey World, we don't need to see every blade of grass or anything like that. We're just throwing out the color. Clyde does like bananas, but they must be chocolate covered. That's fun. I like that. Okay, so we're adding some more green. I'm scribbling. I hope you can tell I'm just scribbling. You can scribble. You can do this. This is add nice. And you know what? That golf club there, that driver is distracting. So it's got to go. So much for that one. We're not putting it in. I think it's a better composition this way anyway. Oops. Every once in a while you get in areas you you really wanted to stay out of, but you just say whoops and you can paint over it. Move out of them later. I'll add a little violet to the edge just for some interest. There. You know, if I just left a flat background, it'd be kind of boring. 
but sometimes you need a flat background so that you have a quiet place for something active to happen. But um, not today. And I'm, I'm alternating between a bright, loud green that's probably close to being inappropriate and a nice sap green. And that also adds interest. I like that nice, cool green right next to this red on the pom-pom. That's just happy. They're complementary colors. Some more hair, a little brighter there. And a little more violet, just on the edge. What do we have here? A little more green. Now about halfway through the painting, I, 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 you know, I changed direction. I was, I was going to really put in a lot of these clubs, but then after, after I was part of the way through, I thought, no, let's just keep the focus on the monkey. So there will be some clubs in here, but uh, not, not as many as were in the bag. And you know what? None of this would even happen. Or, yeah, it's amazing how one a little idea goes in a different direction. I was doing my, I mean, how this whole head cover thing got started. I was doing my book signing for my children's book at um, Bridgemark Golf and Country Club, and at the time, the general manager Eric Dietz looked at uh, my sock monkey character and he said, "Oh." Those would be great head covers. I thought, wow, that's cool. They really would. And so several years later, now, this, now they are. And so it's interesting where, where your art can take you, just places you never dreamed. But uh, this was all just because a friend made a, an incredible uh, suggestion. And of course, he knew people to call, too. That helped. OK. I dropped my reference photo, so I'm going to have to go to the basement and get it. <laughs> I'm living in the basement here, guys. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> uh, I was pretty much painting paint blind here for the last, last little bit. All right. So where, where else are we seeing some more green? Let's just get that whipped in. Get his golf bag in. I mean, he's got the ultimate golf bag. I'm going just up to the pom pom, and that's it. I'm going to just kind of leave that. Oh, that's pretty. All right. Um, I got to stop there. That's his bag. There's his bag there. Under the pom-pom is a little bit of... And you know what? Since I took out that golf club, this will be green here, too. We didn't need that club anyway. Okay, that's part of a hat. All right, maybe I'll throw in a little bit of green here. The rest is more more bag, so I'm going to put that bag in now. And I'm going to mix uh, a black, a neutral black. Let's see, I'm just going to take purple and blue and red and just, ooh. And how would I make that black? Add a little green to that. There we go. And 
It will read black, sort of. So I'm going to put that down quickly as soon as I find the right brush. Okay, got lots of medium. And what does this do? What does this bag do? Okay, so right at the very top, it's like it goes around like this. There's a hat there. I want to paint around that. That's a nice block. Let's see. I totally changed his um, his pom pom needs to be a lot bigger. I didn't realize that. Wow. Well, let's just do that. Poor guy. I want to short change his little pom poms here. All right. So it's dark here. Wow. They're huge. Mongo pom poms. <laughs> okay. Light over on this side. The things you notice later. Okay, so now I'll just put in this dark here. There, we have instant pom pom. That's way big. Okay. So continue to put in this bag. Let's see, there's a bunch of, oh, I just, this poor little body, I didn't finish that off. We'll have you go up here in the, the bag. Now, in the bag, he's sticking out a little farther, but in this case, I'm elongating his body because I like the composition better. He's just popping out of that. There we go. And let's just see if we can just get this crest sketched in in this little bit of time. All right, so there's the bottom of the bag. That'd be dark down there. Do we have time to do the golf clubs? I don't know. We'll see. That's a little dark there. There. A little bit of light in the center to give that form as well. And I think I'm going to leave this alone and see if we can't address the golf clubs. All right, so what are we going to do with these things? Well, guess what? My golf clubs are red. <laughs> Most of them, anyway. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and, and paint those in. Now, this, this is distracting back here with this... this uh, God, I don't know, it's a fairway wood back here. I, I think that's got to go, too. Because he's just, uh, it, it's just a weird, the light value against this is really distracting. So rather than, you know, just because it's in the picture doesn't mean you have to paint it. So how are we going to finish up this painting? Well, we'll take out this. There. That's better. And... Do we need all of these clubs? I don't know. Maybe he's just coming out of the bag. Sometimes it's a case of not adding things, but what you can take away. So what I think I do for this painting at this point is I would cover the background with the green, let it dry, and then decide later what clubs I want to put back in. That way it's already there. Yeah, that's a lot cleaner. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Okay, so wh what am I going to do with this painting? I will add... I will put some clubs back in after it's dry, but this way I'm not going to have to paint around it because I've already got a background in. I'll finish the clubs and the uh, bag and the hat and, you know, and put that you know, all back into this area and really work on the form. 
And before I, before I sign off here, there are a couple things I just need to do. Scrape off any hard edges. That way you're not stuck with uh, globs of paint that you have to paint over when you decide you may move things around. But really, I think this is a, a pretty good first statement. The guy's popping out of the bag. He's having a good time. And um, it's a nice complimentary composition. So thanks for watching Give Your Wall Some Soul. Don't forget to check out the blog at GiveYourWallSomeSoul.com. You'll be able to see him when he's finished, post paintings, and um, really we can all interact together. Thanks for watching. I'm Shannon Grissom.